This video is sponsored by Skillshare. This is Samya Stumo, a 24-year-old nonprofit worker from the US. These are Ryan, Kelly, and Ruby, aged between six years and nine months from Canada. And this is Rizal Putra, his wife Wita Siriani, and their baby daughter Chiara from Indonesia. What do these people have in common? These are all individuals who were killed in the two 737 MAX crashes six months apart. We are following breaking news out of Ethiopia where a plane went down just outside the capital that led to the global grounding of the 737 MAX for almost two years. Boeing, the company who makes the 737 MAX, had created this aircraft to modernize their existing line of extremely successful 737 aircraft, a move that resulted from the announcement of the A320neo, new engine option by their main competitor Airbus. In the process of developing this new eco-friendly aircraft, Boeing cut corners, severely defrauding the US government in the process and ultimately created an airplane with a deadly flaw, a flaw that the company knew had the potential to kill. This airplane was designed by clowns, who in turn were supervised by monkeys, Boeing employees said in an internal memo. This is a story that must be told. This is the story of how Boeing, focused solely on profit, lied, deceived, and is ultimately responsible for the deaths of 346 people. This is the story of the 737 MAX. Boeing is one of the two largest aircraft manufacturers in the world. They first introduced their most popular aircraft, the 737, in 1965. The aircraft actually wasn't entirely new at this point. Instead, Boeing used the same fuselage, the body, as one of their first ever jet aircraft, the Boeing 727, introduced in 1960. 60% of the 727's components were transferred to the 737 in order to speed up production. In other words, the frame of the 737 has been around for a long time. The original 737 was powered by Pratt & Whitney low bypass engines. As you can see, these engines were long and skinny and look unlike any engines that are around today. Initially, these engines were supposed to be mounted at the back of the aircraft, like on the 717, but they found that the benefits of putting the engines below the wing outweighed the drawbacks, despite the 737 fuselage being positioned relatively low to the ground. Several variants of the aircraft were introduced in the following decades. First, the 737 Classic, a re-engined version of their original. Then, in the early 1990s, Airbus, a newcomer on the market, introduced their A320. Airbus was relatively small at the time, and Boeing wouldn't have seen them as a major threat until previously loyal 737 customers like United and Lufthansa started ordering the A320 instead. This prompted Boeing to develop a third version of their 737, the 737 Next Generation, which features a redesign of several aircraft components, including the engines and the wing. This showed that Boeing was capable of making significant changes to the 737 when necessary based on competitive forces, and it proved wildly successful. The A320 did gain a lot of market share, but the 737 continued to perform well considering that it was just an upgraded version of an aircraft introduced 20 years before the A320. Then came 2008. At this time, airlines were facing the issue of a global financial crisis. However, this was compounded by something equally if not more harmful. The price of aviation fuel had risen almost 200%. In 2000, fuel accounted for 15% of the ticket price. Eight years later, it accounted for a staggering 40%. This, along with an increasing environmental awareness, signaled that the time was approaching for yet another upgrade to the leading narrowbody aircraft both the 737 and the A320. After all, it had been 15 years since the previous enhancements. At this point, Boeing had developed their revolutionary 787, which had excellent versatility, market appeal, and industry low fuel burn. Boeing was excited about the prospect of applying these technologies to its narrowbody line and creating a next generation of short-haul aircraft. This was specifically not meant to be a re-engined 737, but an entirely new aircraft. 
Except, in December of 2010, Airbus revealed the A320neo. This aircraft was an instant success. In the year after it was announced, it received over 1,400 orders worth more than 120 billion US dollars. This made it the fastest selling aircraft of all time. Understandably, this concerned Boeing, but publicly, they remained committed to creating an entirely new aircraft. Until... American Airlines was a famous Boeing loyalist. They exclusively ordered from them, and the airline had a close relationship with the manufacturer. That's why Boeing, in the entire aviation industry, was caught off guard when American Airlines announced an order for 260 Airbus aircraft including 130 A320neo. The even bigger surprise was that American announced an order for 100 of Boeing's expected new evolution of the 737, with a new engine that would offer even more significant fuel efficiency gains over today's models, saying they were pleased to be the first airline to commit to Boeing's new 737 family offering. What could Boeing do? Just one month after this order was announced, Boeing gave a green light to the re-engined 737 project while remaining committed to creating an entirely new narrowbody with 787 technology now by 2030. So the question is, how do you take an aircraft with engines that originally looked like this and install massive engines like this? The 737 is fundamentally different from the A320 in this regard, and installing new engines was not simple, so Boeing engineers played around with the engine position just as they had when developing the original model back in 1965. They figured out that if they placed the engines further up on the wing, they could fit, even though the weight distribution would be different than the previous generations. This caused the aircraft nose to push forward more than previous models, so Boeing developed a system to prevent the nose from going too far up and leading to a stall. This was the birth of the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, MCAS. However, this system proved to be a cause of concern. As early as 2013, internal memos reveal that Boeing knew that this would be a potential issue. Three years later, 737 test pilots discovered that MCAS significantly altered the performance of the aircraft in certain rare situations. This was not good for Boeing. And although some staff repeatedly tried to voice their concerns, they were shut down. The priority for Boeing was to make this new variant entirely compatible with previous generations, requiring minimal additional pilot training and new information in order to appeal to airline customers. Therefore, it's not surprising that Boeing was concerned that if they emphasized MCAS as a new function, there may be a greater certification and training impact, not to mention their concern if the risks related to MCAS came out. So what did they do? They hid the system entirely in their reports to airlines and to global regulators. They could not let this flaw cost them time or money. As a consequence, the FAA excluded MCAS from their briefings on the new aircraft. The 737 MAX went on to sell at record speeds and was launched to a lot of buzz and excitement. Airlines now had a seemingly attractive alternative to the A320neo, and in its first two years of service, the 737 MAX did reasonably well with almost 400 models delivered, until... Authorities say a Lion Air passenger plane carrying 189 people has crashed into the sea. On October 29th, 2018, Lion Air Flight 610 crashed into the Java Sea shortly after takeoff. Boeing and analysts were quick to point to the airline's poor safety record. No changes were made to the aircraft. In the following months, internal Boeing memos started being investigated. Some of the quotes you're about to see were available to Boeing and other agencies at that time. Would you put your family on a MAX simulator trained aircraft? I wouldn't. I'll be shocked if the FAA passes this blank. This is a joke. This airplane is ridiculous. Best part is, we are restarting this whole thing with the 777X with the same supplier and have signed up to an even more aggressive schedule. Again, no changes were made and nothing was done. The new Boeing 737 crashing just minutes after takeoff in Ethiopia. 157 people were on board the flight and there were no survivors. On March 10th, 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crashed in an eerily similar manner. After the second crash, Boeing was quick to defend themselves, 
Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut said Boeing came to him shortly after and said the crashes were a result of pilot error. Boeing blamed the pilots who had just died, the pilots whose deaths they were responsible for. Don't forget, Boeing had deliberately chosen to conceal information from pilots, from airlines, and from regulators. If I'd been a passenger on one of those planes and I knew about these incidents, I would have wanted a parachute. Since then, whistleblower after whistleblower have come forward. One former 737 project manager had some damning words that I'll share toward the end of this video. Before that, one question. Is Boeing entirely responsible for what happened? The Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, holds responsibility here as well. This government agency is supposed to objectively oversee the safety of aircraft that Boeing produces before certifying the airplane to operate in the US. This agency used to be one of the world's most respective regulators, so understandably, other regulators would take pointers or simply follow what the FAA did. Internal documents show that Boeing started convincing the FAA to relax requirements on cockpit alerts when something was going wrong with systems, including MCAS, way back in 2014. In 2019, after the crashes, documents leaked showing that the FAA's own simulations estimated the airplane would have a fatal accident every two to three years without intervention. This relationship became even more questionable after the second 737 MAX crash, when global regulators were quick to ground the 737 MAX out of precaution given the similarity between the crashes. Who was the last to ground the aircraft type long after every other regulator in the world? The FAA. Why? Well, we can speculate that the financial impact that grounding this aircraft would have on Boeing would not only harm Boeing, but would harm US financial interests. So basically, the FAA blindly trusted Boeing and didn't do the job they were required to do, keep passengers safe. So, on January 7th of this year, the US Justice Department revealed the results of its investigation into fraud at Boeing, and claims that it had intentionally deceived the FAA and its customers. The claims were true, and Boeing was ordered to pay two and a half billion US dollars in damages. As you may have seen, this came right around the time the aircraft returned to service after 20 months on the ground. Right now, it's returning to more and more airlines, and Boeing swears by its safety. However, Boeing employees don't seem to agree. He urged the Boeing manager to shut down the factory for a few weeks to straighten things out. And what was his reaction to that? And he said, um, you know, we can't shut down. And, and then I kind of got mad and said, you know, I've seen military operations shut down for a lot less. What was his reply to that? Something I'll never forget. He said, um, he said, well, well the military is not a profit-making organization. Ed Pearson, a former Boeing employee, published a paper titled The 737 MAX Still Not Fixed, where he outlines multiple concerns that are allegedly not addressed by Boeing's changes. Investigators found serious abnormalities in the flight histories of the 737s that crashed, and Pearson claims that 1 in 25 737 MAX faced safety incidents in their first year of service alone, something that is unheard of with modern day aircraft. To get personal here, I don't know what to make of these reports, and these recent reports are not the reason I'm making this video. I simply want to provide a voice for the families and the victims of Boeing's deception. Lies on this scale have no place in a company that claims safety is its number one priority. And it's important to keep highlighting this issue so that something like this can never happen again. Because after all, if safety had been Boeing's number one priority, Samya, Ryan, Kelly, Ruby, Rizalwita, and Chiara, along with 339 others, could still be alive. Hey guys, so are you still working from home and looking for ways to boost your productivity? Look no further than Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes on any topic under the sun, including productivity like this class called Productivity Habits That Stick, which teaches you all about time theming with Mike Vardy. What's time theming? Well, the first thousand people to click the link at the top of the description can find out and learn this productivity skill along with so many other skills with a free trial of Skillshare Premium. And after your trial, you can enjoy Skillshare Premium for less than $10 a month 
with an annual membership. And a quick bonus tip, if you're missing human interaction, they've just introduced live classes. You can interact with the professionals, the teachers, and other students from all over the world. So click that link at the top of the description and check Skillshare out.